Hey, it's Dawn here. And in this video, we are going to be looking at reporting. Uh, boring, I know, <laughs> for a lot of people. But however, don't stop the video because you are going to love this. This is what we use for our clients. And this is how we are able to extract information inside of ManyChat from the bot flow so that we can give that and pass that information on to the client. But also we can look and see what's happening, where the conversions are happening, where potentially things are not working out. Have we got drop offs and things like that? So what I actually want to share with you in this video is how you can build this. Now, I'm not going to make this into something quite advanced or complex. All I want to do in this video is really let you understand how you can build a custom made report using this particular software here, which is a Scythe. Um, I will turn this video off shortly because I think it's probably glitching a little bit. It might be slowing the video down. Um, but basically what I'm about to share with you is a way for you to be able to pull in tags inside of the bot and bring it into a nice, seamless, clean looking report that you could give to your client. So let me just set myself off camera because um, A, it's very distracting and I'm not entirely sure whether my um, lips are going to the video. It's been a bit glitchy as this lately. So let me get rid of the video, uh, put that down there, make sure I'm definitely off camera. Uh, let's have a look. Are we off camera? None. Let's put that down there and get rid of that. Uh, I do find that quite distracting. <laughs> uh, so this is actually what I want to share with you. Um, Scythe.com is what we use for our clients. And let me just kind of give you a look at this so you can kind of, first of all, see what I'm talking about. So this, for instance, here, um, we know that from the 1st of April to the 30th of April, 158 people came through this flow. And that is because this is a tag. So one of our flows was tagged and we were able to measure the metrics for this particular flow inside of here. All these other things are based on the things that we have. Um, this one's also based upon a tag, um, and this one's also based upon a tag. This one is look, hooked up to a mobile wallet, as is that, as is that, as that. But what we're going to be looking at is tagging, okay? How can we actually have a tag inside of ManyChat and bring it into a nice looking report um, that looks at this. So, I mean, again, when I talk about measuring the metrics, we can see here just as an example, and I want you to think about this as you're building out or you've got flows that you've built for clients. And if you're not able to, if people are not re-engaging, if you've asked a question, for example, and uh, you know, the bots come to a halt. Hopefully you've got re-engagement in place. So you are reminding them, hey, you know, you said you wanted this, but you haven't given us your email yet. So, you know, having those little reminders in the bot is really important. But if you're not managing to get people to the end of the of the flow, you know, to meet that end goal by tagging each of those really important critical CTAs, those call to actions on any of the buttons that you've got tagged, you can look at this and say, right, okay, where's the drop off happening? So if you can see you've got 158 and it's going down and down and down and down until you get to the very end, you could look at this point here, for example, I mean, this is very, this is not based on tags. This is all sorts of different things, but let's say this was just tags. So these are all buttons and we'd look across and we go, right, okay, we've got a big drop off here. You would look at that question that you've asked and think, right, are we asking the right question? Is this something else that we can do? Because yes, you can look inside of the metrics. You can look inside of the, the, um, many chat audience and you can see the numbers going down but to visually see something inside of here a is really good for you and also just to you know report lead gen and all that kind of stuff for your client things that you're building possibly manually as a report to send to a client that's wasting time for you you could basically just build it all into a nice clean looking report that sends all that data to your client each week, each month, however often you want them to have it or, you know, give them the link and they can go in every day if they wanted. Um, be careful with that one, though. <laughs> what you don't want is a client ringing every two minutes going, what's happening? Um, but yeah, there's all sorts you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go into this. And um, so, I mean, like I say, like for here, for example, we know that people are going into this particular client, they're going in and redeeming this particular offer. And we can see that we've got something hooked up whereby, you know, 74 people came in, but out of those 74 people, 49 of them were returning customers. So we know we've got like, what's that? 
70%. I don't know, my math is not that great. <laughs> Is that a 70% return? Um, so again, looking at this, and I know here, for example, looking at my report, I had to go back and have a word with the restaurant because we know that some of the staff have not been entering uh, the information in as well. We know that this will, mm, should probably be around um, the three and a half to four thousand pounds. So again, this quickly, you know, by we looked at this and was like, there's something wrong. You know, people are redeeming it and we can see that, you know, the, you know, that shouldn't be zero, for example. So we knew, we knew that people weren't actually entering the amount. This is based on mobile wallet, by the way, but just, just as an example, I wanted to kind of show you that if something doesn't look right to you as well, you can easily spot it if you've got it inside of a report. So yes, you have to build this out, but once it's built, it's done because basically what you're able to do then is you can go back, you can look at the data, um, you can pull in reports. I don't think we've got anything. I'm not quite sure we've got anything running for this um, in April. So like if we were going to do April to here, uh, we've got a new one starting next week, actually. Uh, we didn't have one the month before for this particular offer. Uh, so as you can see here, we've still got some things coming through, uh, but nothing, no live campaigns at the moment. Um, I think these guys, we had a different flow for them. We may not have anything in feb i'm not quite sure let's have a pull through so again you can look and you can say right okay what is the quarterly report from this yeah we didn't have a campaign on this one it's it's in one of our other flows here however you know by having this you can go into the dashboard uh let me just have a look here and export this so if you wanted to pull the data on a quarterly um, quarterly basis and send this to a client for example all we would do is we would go into the export the dashboard and inside of here we can send it as a png we can send it as a pdf which is quite good um, we can schedule these reports we can send them to whoever we want to send them to do we want to just send it once are we sending them every day are we going to send them every week um if so what day do we want to send that on or are we going to send them every month at the end of every month if so what date do we want to send these reports on is it going to be the 10th who are we going to email this to what is the subject heading of that going to be and then we can click start if i was to click uh but start on that that will put schedule in place so now we know that that report once you've built it out and you've scheduled it that would be sent to the client or whoever you've sent it to each and every month or he, each and every week. And like I say, here you've got this. You can even build a different one as well if you wanted to go, um, you know, one on the 1st and one on the 15th. So you're sending it every two weeks. And then if you wanted to get rid of any of these, then you can just clear that out and delete the schedule. So this is basically how you can actually send it on as a report based on it being as a PDF or CSV files or anything like that. But then also you've got this URL as well. So if you wanted to, you can create a URL. Who are you sharing that with? I'll just put my name in there. I'll just put a password in here. Uh, create a URL. And then what that allows you to do is you've got a URL that you would then be able to uh, send on to your clients so that they can just go in and all they would simply do is put a pass the password that you've given them and they go in and they can actually view the dashboard at any time they want. So I want you to have, a, I'm not going to spend too long going into all of this stuff in here because I'm going to show you how to build a report from scratch anyway, but it's quite intuitive, you know, have a play around once you've signed up for this. Um, but I just wanted to, first of all, give you an idea as to what we're building and why we're doing it and kind of an overview of something that we've got um, going on just for one of our clients, um, just so you can kind of see how it looks before we dive in. So. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to build a dashboard and we're going to build it based upon some tags inside of many chats. So the first thing that you need to do is I'm going to pull my little um, my little notes up here. First thing you need to do is obviously you're going to be using many chats. So that's quite obvious. Um, you will need to use uh, you will need to have a Zapier account. So if you haven't got a Zapier account, uh, we're going to be going into there and that is something else that you will actually need to sign up for. I think with what we're actually going to build for this instance, you could probably do it on a free account. But again, you know, if it's something that you're going to be using for lots of your clients, I know a lot of people probably um, will already be using Zapier. Um, 
I say that because I connect with so many people who are no use it. But again, if you don't, then you can just sign up for a free account to start with. Uh, but again, I would advise um, having an account where you can use this um, for all of your clients and your own business. And then we're going to be using Scythe and you can actually have a free Scythe account. So again, go in, play around with the free account. And then I would encourage you to upgrade um, it's $29 a month. But if you imagine what, how much time do you spend on creating reports for your clients? And I think you've really got to kind of think from that particular mindset. And I dare say uh, you're worth more than $29 an hour. Um, and think of how many multiple hours that you would spend trying to pull in reports and give that information to a client when all you need to do is create a Scythe report and then that's it. It's pretty much on autopilot. So the things that you need to, so they're the requirements that, that we're gonna use. Step by step, what you need to do first is you need to decide on what those metrics are. So whether you have a conversation with the client and say, right, okay, these are the key things that I really want uh, you to see each month with regards to what's happening inside of the bot or ask them what, you know, what's important to you? What do you need to happen? But I guess you're going to know because you're building the bot. Ultimately, they want to know what that end goal looks like. But what we're actually doing here is we're just going to use this for the for the bot um tags to start with. So decide on what those key metrics are and what you want to measure. Then what you're going to do is based upon the tags that you need to measure, make a list. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Then you would need to obviously create your first zap. And then we go ahead and we create our Scythe report. So first of all, step one, decide on what those KPIs need to be. Now for me in this instance, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take you into um, one of my bots. Um, I'm just going to do it from from Ribbit rather than a client. So what we've got here is this is one of um, like a one to one mentoring bot that I have. So inside of here, um, so we've got all these particular uh, actions inside of here. So some of these are like um, if they don't answer a question, then they get fed through. We kind of remind people to just keep continuing until they get right to the end so that we don't lose them. But the key metrics as well would be one. This is where they come into the bot. Number two. When they've actually booked through Calendly, it's linked up in Zapier. So we know that we've this has been tagged. So we've got a tag on this here that's an important metric. We've got a tag in the form when somebody completes a type form. We've got it set up in Zapier where they get a message that sends back. So as soon as they're tagged, again, we know that um, they fill the form in. And again, if somebody cancels inside of Calendly, then they get that message as well. So I'm only going to use this as an example. What I want you to do is think about what your flows look like. Um, you know, how many flows have you got, you know, from that step to that step to that step to that step? What are the important metrics? Or is it a case of when you're inside of a bot, it could just be a case of, right, okay, what tags do you want to tag something with inside of the bot? So again, all of these feed through to rules where if somebody doesn't answer this particular question, we do send them another flow again. But visually, I just like to see everything like I have for this one in one particular place and then everything's feeding through. But it could be that, you know, you want to measure, did somebody, um, you know, were somebody tagged um, as an agency? What Were they tagged as a business? You know, what do those metrics look like? So decide what those are. So that's the first step you need to do. OK. Um, and then you will need to go through and make a list. So honestly, please do make a list because I'll show you why as we're going through this, because it really will save you a lot of time and it'll speed up the process in here. What we're going to do is I'm just going to do one with these four to start with. So as you can see, this is the first one inside of here. And the first tag is this mentoring box. So all I've literally do is I go into each one, I would copy and then I just drop this into my shopping list like here. So put that in there and I'm not going to go through all that. So go through all of the flows again in this one here. That's the tag we need to do in the third one. This is the tag that we need for the submitted form. In the fourth one, this is the tag. So if you've got your little shopping list with your tags, it just means that you're ready and you're set and you can crack on building the report in Zapier and in Scythe. So you're not having to keep coming back into the bot and going, oh my God, what was it called? I can't remember. You've got your list. You've got your little checklist here. You can go through. Once you've done them all, it's simply a case of checking them off and going, right, done. Remember, once you've done this once, um, 
you don't have to do it again because if this is a lead gen bot and it's constantly in place, then each month you can track the data anyway by using the um, this feature here, which we showed you, which was the calendar uh, at the top when it decides it's going to pull through, which is that there. So we've got our shopping list. What we're going to do now is, so if we look here, we've got the shopping list and we're going to create our Zap in Zapier and then we're going to feed and get that information and we're going to get the dashboard built inside of Scythe. So when we're in Scythe, um, as you can see, you've got this at the moment. You will have a completely blank slate. You won't have any, these are all the dashboards that we've got inside of here. You won't have anything. So bear in mind, you're going to be completely clean. So the first thing we'll do is actually, before we dive into it here, let's build a new dashboard. Now, I don't think the interface of this is particularly fantastic, but hey ho, it, it works. It's all that matters. So all you're going to do is once you've come in, you've set your account up, um, you're going to click on this little plus sign and we're going to click create a new dashboard. So I'm going to call this demo, um, I'll call it Scyf, uh training, add a dashboard. So we're going to start from a completely clean slate. So once you've got this, what we're going to use is we're going to use these which are called widgets. So there's all sorts of different things. I will um, encourage you to just literally go and have a look through all of these. There's so much you can do, like it links up to Active Campaign, all of this. You've got all the monitoring stuff. You've got all, you've got everything in here, Trello. So there's so many metrics that you can actually measure with plugins uh, or widgets, as they call them, uh, that are already inside of here. So unfortunately, many chat isn't inside of here, which is why we're having to do um, our zaps. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going into the custom area here and we're going to use the push API key. So click on add. And once you're in here, this is where we start making our first report. And what's really cool is when you get that there, you just move this around. You can shrink it down to size. And you can put that exactly where you want it to be. And we're going to come in here. I'm going to configure this in a second because we're going to just dive over here now. And we're just going to go in to uh, Zapier itself. So bear in mind, um, where we saw um, the, do, 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 well, the first one that we had when we had uh, this particular report up here. Let me just click into this just for a second. This one here. Um, this piece of data is if we were to come into Zapier and look at the dashboard, this is exactly where this actually came and was about. So as you can see from this particular flow, what we were saying was when somebody is tagged with this particular tag, um, we send it to a Google spreadsheet. But this is where we actually push the data and we bring it into here. And this is where that metric is reported. So going back to this here. That's where we've got that information from. So that is how it's actually built inside of um, inside of here. So everywhere where you see uh, the C, we're actually pushing uh, we're pushing data into a report, so we can measure every action that happens inside of all of these apps here. So that's just to kind of give you that overview as to how that looks. So let's just go back to our demo one here. So let's go and create our folder. So the first thing I would advise you to do is create a folder. Uh, so at the top here where you've got the plus, um, create yourself a folder and I'll call this A so it just sits at the top for me there. And I'm going to call this uh, Demo uh, Scythe. So this is our folder and we'll start inside of here. So again, if you haven't set yourself up with a, many chat, uh, a Zapier account, just kind of go in and create yourself an account. Um, and then you'll be able to um, get going with your very, very first zap. So create your folder and now we're going to make a new zap. So this is going to be the very first zap that we create. Now, the first thing we're going to do is um, we are going to um, set up our trigger. Now, a trigger is the zap is saying to us, what do you want me to do? And we would say, right, OK, we need some information from ManyChat. So ManyChat is the app that we're actually going to choose. And what we want to do is we're saying when somebody is tagged, then we want to click that button there. Click save and continue. And then we go and connect to the account. So if you haven't already got a, um, an account connected, you simply click on the connect there and you'll be able to go through all of the pages. It'll pull through 
um, all of the Facebook pages that you've got connected to your account. So as you can see here, we can go through all of these. These are all connected to mine, um, but we've already got this set up. So go and find the page that you would want connecting. So what we're gonna do here is, this is coming from my Ribbit page. So all we're gonna do is, because this is already connected, um, we're just gonna click on uh, the test. So we've got the green success button, so we know that everything is okay. Next thing we're gonna do is, we're going to go and find that tag now. Here's where you're gonna use your shopping list, right? We want this one here, so I'm literally just gonna copy. So Control and C or Command and C if you're on a Mac. And then all we're gonna do is come into this drop down, and we're gonna paste that in there. Don't need that front bit on there. So if you can't find what you're looking for, reload, reload, and we'll find this, and this is here. So this is the tag that we want to use. Now you do have to go through your bot and be tagged with the tag in order for it to pull up inside of Zapier. So I'm only saying this because I know for those who haven't used Zapier before uh, and not quite sure how this works, you do have to make sure that you have gone through the bot, whether you preview it or add a tag to your name inside of ManyChat, but do make sure you've gone through and you have got the tag so that you can actually test and you can build this report and build it in. So now we've done that, we click on add a step and in the next action, we're looking for Scythe. So all you need to do is type in Scythe and it's already uh, an app inside of Zapier. Save and continue. And as we connect Scythe, this is where we're at now. Now this is the API key that we need to pull in. So when we go back here now, every little widget that has an API key, as long as we make sure that that API key in here, which is this one here, is gonna be what we actually add into here, this will always talk to each other and give you the correct information. So again, what we will be using from here is copy this. In fact, we'll name it because this is what it's actually gonna be. So this is our first metric that we're gonna put in there. And then let's go back here. So we're gonna give this a title. So again, call it exactly the same as what you've got. So we'll call this, it's putting those in because I've got it in a checklist. Uh, so one-to-one -one mentoring, this is our number one zap that we're gonna use. Here you can choose however you want your chart to appear. I'm going to show you what the column looks like. This is what I tend to use. And then in here, all you're gonna do is if you press Command and A or Control and A, it'll highlight that whole row for you. And then copy that and then save the widget. So what we've done now is we've actually built the widget, but because it's got no data, um, this is what we do here. We actually now control and V and we paste that into there. So now what we do is we name the metric. So I would always name it what we've got up there. So again, just copy and paste, bring that in. Now this is the name that you will see inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this slightly different just so that you can see um, where that name actually comes in. So I'll just put zap there. So we've got the API. We've named the metric. This will always remain at one because every time somebody comes through this particular flow, it's always gonna increase by one. Somebody comes through again, it'll increase by one. So what that's gonna do is, it's always gonna increase uh, the number of people, which is where you get your stats from inside of the report. Um, the value in this is gonna be a number as opposed to being a currency. And um, we've got here that the metric is gonna be uh, good. So you can just leave it on being a good metric as people are coming through. And honestly, that is it. Let's hit continue. You have now built a custom report, which we can send to Scythe. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna build it all out. Uh, so we've sent a test, finished the zap, turn the zap on, that is ready to go. Every time somebody comes through this flow now, what's gonna happen is uh, they're gonna come into here and I am gonna build up this metric each and every single time. So as you can see here, we've got one person that's come through, which was me doing the test. So you see, I've got the zap. So that name that I put in there, you can name that whatever you want. Just try and keep it the same because otherwise it just gets a bit confusing. Um, I just like to keep everything the same as, as what it, you know what that basically is at the top, unless you do want it to be anything else, but I can't understand why you would. So that's the first one that you've done. Now this is where it gets even easier because once you've built one, um, and all we're doing is we're just in this particular instance, we're just going to build um, we're going to build a report that shows us tags. So we're just looking at tags in this particular instance. So for us, what we're going to do is here, if you click on the drop down box, click on copy. And this time 
we're going to do the next one. But because everything's already been kind of set up, we've got these two. All we're doing is swapping out the data. Go back to your shopping list. Uh, now we're going to pull in the next metric, which is this one here. We're going to um, give it a new name. Uh, put that one in there. I'm going to copy that again. So I've got that. So now we've actually given this a name. We, again, we've got the new tagged user. Um, it's already hooked up. If you do want to test that again, by all means, you can click there. So we've got the test. Edit the option. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look for this new tagged user. So this is the one we're looking for. Check. And as you can see here, success booked. Click that one. So this is the tag that we're measuring now. Again, make sure you've been through, you've done your preview. And once you've done a preview, you will be able to, um, you know, you can have a look down and see who that is. And then you can pull that through. It doesn't have to be you, for example. Um, if somebody has gone through this by the time you've realized you want to you know, do anything. It's not going to send them anything or so don't panic. Uh, it just means that you're just going to have somebody that's gone through and you can push some data and you can build your report from from here on in. Again, now what we do is we're going to here. You can rename these as well. So I would advise you to rename these. So although this is a push to the report, um, again, this is the uh, success booked. So again, new tagged user. Um, it might just be a, this is not too bad because we're building out something pretty simple here. If you've got, um, I mean, I, I won't go into it, but I've got one that's got 22 of these going down. Now, if you've just got new tag user, new tag user push and, and all these things, it's really difficult to really understand what's going on inside of your zaps if you're not actually naming these as well. So, again, this might just be um, here. You could just put um, success uh, booked. Um, like I say, it's not too bad because we know that that's all this is. But if this was a flow that had lots of other different actions going on, I would advise you to click into there and just rename those just for your own sanity uh, more than anything. Uh, so again, we click on edit. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to remove this API key because that's obviously the old one for the other report. Get rid of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create another dashboard. So we click into here, not a dashboard, a new widget. Um, and all we're going to do is push API again. We're going to grab this. We're going to get the API key. So we'll copy that. We're going to put this over here and then we're going to drop this into here. So now we've got the API. What we're going to do is in this instance, let's copy this. We're going to put that in there because it's the success one. Now this is already built. Let's just pop this into here and rename this, save that widget. Now, if you see, we've kept that one as a line. So you'll be able to see what the line looks like. I'm not really keen on the lines because I don't like, I just like my nice chunky columns. So let me go back to here. We've got the API key pulled in. We've named everything. One is the metric, again, that we're going to use. Um, you can change the color. So let's change this as well. And we'll make this purple. Just so, again, depending on the metrics that you want to do, it might be a case of just so that you clearly identify certain things. So it could be... Um, you know, somebody comes through the start of the flow, but then if they've kind of booked into a calendar appointment or they've booked a webinar or booked something, you might want to make that a different color so you can distinguish uh, how that looks. Turn that zap on. Let's do a refresh and we'll have this report in here as well. So as you can see, that actually didn't take as, as long. So you see, that's the, I don't like that. I like to see these. So as you can see here, that's pulled through. So now we can see that was the starting step. This is the success book. So you can see how many, you know, that compares to, to this one here. Um, so again, um, let me just, I just want to build this because I just want to show you once you've got that first one, it is so easy then to just continue and keep doing this. If we go in, we've got that ready. Let's go over here, go into the zap. Like I say, now we've got this one here. We're just going to copy this one again. Click on copy, uh, go into here, go to the shopping list. I want to go through this quickly. Um, just to show you, if you're working, you know, without talking, imagine how quick you also can get through this. So this is the copy. Let's paste that in there. So we've got the name of it inside of there. Now what we're going to do is we've got our new tag user. Go into the edit. Inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to find this tag again. Uh, let's just delete that. Check and find this. Uh, form submitter. So it's one to one. We've got this one here. Click continue. And then it's going to pull uh, this through. So again, we're OK to continue with this. Um, now, again, don't forget if you're going to rename this, this is uh, form. I'm just going to type that for quickness. Again, rename this uh, for the um, form submitted. 
And then inside of here, all we're going to do is edit this template again. So get rid of the API key. Obviously, we've got our name. We're going to rename that. So it's one to one form submitted. Let's pop back to the dashboard. Rename that so we know it's the form submitted. Obviously, that's a bit annoying because I'm pulling it in from a checklist. Again, I'm going to put this in a column again and I'm going to grab that API key, copy that, save that widget, pop back over here, drop that API key into there again. Uh, and let's just say we want to give this another color. We'll call this one yellow, not call it yellow, we'll give it yellow. So that's another one done. So you see how quick I was able to build that up. So that's a scythe. And then again, if we do a refresh on this, um, that'll pull that data in as well. So I'm not going to do any more because I think you get the gist of that now. <laughs> so as you can see, this is how you can build um, a custom made report based on all the different actions that are going to be really important for your client or for your own business as well. Um, I think we tend to do a lot of things for our own business and we forget about uh, for our clients and we forget about our own businesses. But there's so much you can do once you're inside of here. Honestly, have a good play around with this. Um, you can't break anything, um, but just be really diligent to start with. Okay, I kind of went through pretty quickly at the end there, but you know, being organized to start with, like deciding what those KPRs are, making a list of the tags to start with and putting them in a list. Like these are all the other tags inside of just one of the flows, for example. So if I wanted to measure all of this and I could see that everything came to a halt around here, I know that I've got to kind of do something with whatever the messaging is, whatever the button says. I know with one of our clients um, for the wedding booking that we had um, on one of their particular flows, we said get information because the client didn't want to give prices. As soon as we changed the button to get prices, our conversion rate from the email sign up went from something like, I think it was 6% to 75%. And that was because we was able to measure and see what was happening and and really kind of put a stop to that pretty quickly. So have a good think about how you can use this. Um, like I say, make sure that you just get yourself organized to start with. And it really is then just copy and paste. Once this is built and once it's done and you finished it, then you don't have to touch that again. It's kind of done like like this with our client here. This is all built. OK, we've got all sorts of different things going in here, but but this is built. Everything in here, literally, I don't have to touch anything in here now. Inside of um, here, all of these reports now are basically um, what we would use in order to give to the client. So they have this report each and every single month and it just makes things nice it just makes life easier as well so any questions um, drop them in the comments and i really really hope that this video has helped you to put some good solid reporting into your business that you can give to your clients and like i say we've got you can literally have as many dashboards as you want inside of here uh, for 29 dollars a month so well worth the money and good luck and uh, enjoy creating your reports